Welcome to this introduction to the Wildlife Strategy in Terraforming Mars. The Wildlife Strategy is a fairly extensive plan that has a number of different elements that interact with each other. The three main parts involve gaining microbes, gaining animals, and creating a plant engine. And we'll look at these three sections in turn. Firstly, I'll show you a handful of cards that link efficiently with all three strategies and these are the cards that really make these strategies competitive in terms of gaining points. As always, there are certain corporations that will have abilities that help you to play this strategy more effectively. Inventrix is one that can really make the strategy work well, as a lot of the highly valuable animal and microbe cards have global requirements that Inventrix can lower. It does require a bit of luck to happen, however. Ecoline is another great choice for the wildlife strategy, as it starts off with some plant production already, and will make better use of the plant resources that you gain in this strategy. To make the wildlife strategy really effective, it helps to find some of these cards early in the game. They all help you to benefit from the remainder of the strategy more than you would have otherwise, although they are by no means absolutely essential. Several of the cards in this strategy allow you to gain something from playing plant, animal, and microbe cards. Decomposers is the first really important card to look for when you play this strategy. It only requires 3% oxygen, and will allow you to gain a microbe every time you play an animal, plant, or microbe tag, for a victory point for every three microbes that you gain throughout the game. You'll play a good amount of these tags if you commit to this strategy, and this card will net you a good amount of extra points. It's worthwhile getting this as early as you possibly can, but it's unlikely to be worthwhile holding out on playing your other cards to play this one first, so I wouldn't recommend delaying other cards until you find this. Ecological Zone acts in a very similar way. In this case, you will gain an animal every time you play an animal or a plant tag, gaining one victory point for every two animals. Played early in the game, this will be worth another good haul of points. Viral Enhancers will give you a head start on any plant, animal, or microbe card that gathers resources by adding an additional resource when that card is played. For those cards that don't gather resources, it will give you an extra plant. Protected Habitats Protected Habitats is not essential, but it will prevent opponents from taking your microbes, plants, and animals. If this comes up, I would definitely get it for that reason, and also to prevent anybody else from protecting their own resources from you. Advanced Ecosystems is a great play with this strategy. It's cheap, it gives you three tags to benefit from with your other overarching strategy cards, and it gives you three victory points straight away. Your opponents probably won't take it in drafting because they are unlikely to gain the required tags, so it's reasonably likely that you'll be able to pick it up. These two cards allow you to get around the global requirements. They're highly useful in this strategy because a lot of plant, animal, and some microbe cards have high requirements for the global parameters. They are adaptation technology, an ongoing effect, and special design, which is a one-off effect for playing a single card. Several of the animal cards are only playable in the end game usually, and by giving yourself a few extra rounds for ben to benefit from them, you'll moderately improve your point yield from them. Combined with Inventrix, these can be game-winning cards. Now let's talk about the microbe cards that allow you to gather microbe resources in exchange for victory points. Starting with Tardigrades, this is one of the microbe cards that's available from the very beginning of the game, with no global requirements. It is the least efficient microbe cards in terms of the number of microbes you need per point, but it is available straight away. It gives you one victory point for every four microbes. It takes a few rounds to gain you points, 
but however, it provides a microbe tag, and if you manage to get ants later in the game, which I will explain, you'll be able to double the value of some of the microbes that you put here. After Tardigrades, there are three microbe cards that don't directly gain you victory points, but arguably, more importantly, allow you to raise the global parameters and your terraform rating. And they also come with tags that will work well with your overarching strategy cards. Regolith Eaters will raise the oxygen for the cost of two microbes. GHG producing bacteria will raise the temperature in exchange for two microbes. If you had to choose, Regolith Eaters is probably better, as many of your cards will require higher levels of oxygen, but the choice will depend on exactly which cards that you've managed to gain. Nitrite reducing bacteria here is similar, but it raises your TR instead of a global parameter, and it requires three mi microbes rather than two. Extreme Cold Fungus plays an important role in accelerating your microbe game. It can add two microbes to another card, allowing you to gain victory points or raise global parameters more rapidly. It has a maximum temperature of minus 10 degrees to be able to be played, so you need to get it on the board sooner rather than later. Similarly, Symbiotic Fungus can add a single microbe to another card. It also requires minus 14 degrees Celsius in order to be played, so it will not be able to pl be played in the early game. The microbe strategy is really brought together by these two cards, Ants and Worms. Ants is able to remove microbes from other cards and gather them here instead. You can eat the microbes on another card, such as your own Tardigrades, or you can eat other players' microbes. They are, worth, they are worth one victory point for every two ants you gather, so they are quite efficient, and they only require 4% oxygen. For example, if you eat your own tardigrades, you'll be doubling the value uh, in terms of victory points that those microbes are giving you. Worms. This is a powerful mid-game card. It will raise your plant production one step for every two microbe tags that you have already played. This allows you to gain a large presence on the game board in terms of greenery tiles, with potentially four or five increased plant production. There are a handful of extra cards that have microbes tags, and can therefore increase the utility of worms. These are industrial microbes, design microorganisms, and virus. Virus is notable for being very cheap, and allowing you to prevent somebody from building a greenery tile by confiscating their plants. Design microorganisms will boost your plant production, and all three of them will provide you with microbe tags. Finally, there are several cards that can add microbe resources to your cards as a one-off effect. CEO's favourite project is cheap, and it will add one extra microbe. Imported hydrogen is the cheapest of the space cards that have this effect and it will add three microbes or two animals, depending on which of your cards is more efficient. Imported nitrogen will also add three microbes, but gains you plants, animals, and a terraform rating in addition. Finally, error-braked ammonia asteroid will add two extra microbes. Animals work in a similar way to microbes, however, they tend to be more point efficient, giving you one point for every two animals you gain, or even one point for each animal. They have high global requirement conditions, however, and this is where Inventrix, Adaptation Technology, and Special Design come in really handy, because they will allow you to play them earlier in the game. The more rounds you're able to activate your animal cards for, the more points you'll gain. Pets is classically played early in the game to take advantage of people who build cities in an attempt to set up their ground game. It's cheap, and it's immune to predators, and it's almost always a good play early in the game. The rest of the animal cards I'm going to present in the order in which they typically become available based on the global requirements. Small animals. This is available at 6% oxygen. It allows you to reduce somebody's plant production by one step, 
which can be useful if you're in competition for space on the game board. It will accumulate one animal per generation, and one victory point for every two small animals that you manage to gather. Herbivores requires 8% oxygen, and it will also reduce an opponent's plant production by one step. It also gives one victory point for every two herbivores you collect. However, in this case, collecting animals is not an action of the card. Instead, every single time that you place a greenery tile, you'll gain an animal. If you can play this early in the game and play a lot of greenery cards, it can be frighteningly powerful. For example, if you play Inventrix, get an early game adaptation technology, and also play Special Design, you'll be able to play herbivores with only 2% oxygen, and then gain an extra half a point for almost every single greenery tile you place in the entire game. That's a lot of extra points, given that your strategy is going to give you a lot of plant production. Livestock appears at 9% oxygen, and is one of the first animal cards to give one victory point for every single animal you've collected here. For this reason, it's one of the more efficient cards to add animal resources to, if you have special cards that allow you to add extra animals. Predators will appear at 11% oxygen. This card allows you to feed on other people's animal resources, or your own, if nobody has any. Mainly, you will want to take this card out of circulation so that your own animals can't be eaten. But if you're the only player with animals, you can play this and eat your own herbivores or small animals to double the value of those animals. Predators will give you one victory point for every animal that you've eaten. Birds comes out quite late in the game, requiring 13% oxygen. Again, this gives you two victory points. No. Let's do a quick cut. Birds comes out quite late into the game, requiring 13% oxygen, and again gives one victory point for every bird that you collect. Again, it will reduce an opponent's plant production by two. Fish is the animal card that requires positive two degrees rather than oxygen. Just like the other animal cards, it will give you one point per fish and will also reduce an opponent's plant production by one step. A number of special cards will also allow you to add more animals as a one-off effect. As with microbes, CEO's favourite project, imported nitrogen, as well as imported hydrogen, will allow you to do this. Specifically to animals, large convoy will add four animals, as well as giving you quite a lot of other things as well. Local heat trapping will add two animals, and Eos Chasma National Park will add a single extra animal. Finally, the last part of the wildlife strategy is plants. In this section, your aim is to maximise your plant production in order to play greenery tiles. This goes well with having built a few city tiles, as I outlined in my previous strategy video about ground game, which requires city tiles and greeneries. In terms of cards related to plant strategy, there are a huge number of cards that will increase your plant production. I certainly won't go through all of them, but they tend to have plant tags and therefore synergize well with your strategy cards like Decomposers, Ecological Zone, and Viral Enhancers. Just a single example of these cards is Heather. As you can see here, they tend to have moderate global requirements, can be rather cheap, and they don't make a big immediate difference to your plant production. For example, Heather here will only increase plant production by one. A number of cards will allow you to build cheaper, cheaper greenery tiles and provide you with an additional plant tag as well, such as Protected Valley. Finally, there are some cards that augment plant strategy in a different way. We've already talked about Worms, which helps you to convert your early game micro cards into plant game in the last few generations. In addition, Nitrogen Rich Asteroid will increase your plant production by four steps if you've played three plant tags already, which is quite easy if you're dedicated to this strategy. 
This is a big step in plant production, and the card gives you some terraform racing as well, making this a really good card to combine with plant strategy. Similarly, insects will increase plant production by one step for every plant tag that you've played already. A huge boost if you've already played a number of these cards. Insects is the main reason why all of those low-gain plant tag cards are worth it. You can produce a very high amount of plants after you play insects. You can also play greenhouses near the end of the game to gain one plant for every city in play. By combining microbes, animals, and plant game with the overarching strategy cards, you'll create an engine for raising your TR, gaining additional points from your cards, and also managing to profit from an extensive ground game. This makes for a really competitive, flexible game plan, and it's often top on my list of strategy ideas for any multiplayer game of Terraforming Mars. Don't hesitate to play this type of strategy with corporations other than Inventrix and Ecoline if you get a good handful of relevant cards early on in the game. Please check out my ground game video to see how you can combine plant strategy with city building, and subscribe to catch the next strategy video.